Vatican City welcomed recently President Charles de Gaulle in an historic meeting with Pope Paul VI. It was the French Chief of State's third visit. His first was to meet Pope Pius XII during World War II. His second was eight years ago when he met John XXIII. Here on his third visit, the French President was accompanied by his wife, Prime Minister Pompidou, Foreign Minister Coupe de Merville, and the French ambassadors to the Vatican and Italy. In their public addresses, they also had a private meeting, both Pope Paul and President de Gaulle stressed the need for international cooperation. The Pope expressed satisfaction at the movement towards European unity as he noted the 10th anniversary of the European Economic Community, which had just been celebrated in Rome. Speaking in French, he said, but this is only one stage on the road to peace and true fraternity between all the peoples of the earth. We must aim higher and widen the horizon to the dimensions of the world. This is what we wanted to recall in our new encyclical on development, the new word for peace in our century. He recognized that France was moved by similar considerations, and he praised the extent of France's aid to developing countries. In reply, the French president praised the Pope's unending search for peace. He added, this peace, of which your holiness is the first defender, requires that all these disparities which separate poor nations and rich nations all over the world should be banished. A flower show at Orléans in the Loire Valley, a garden within the Garden of France has opened this year. This international garden festival will last six months. A huge park is its setting and visitors may see much of the exhibition from the comfort of a small train. Over 300 florists from 14 countries are displaying their best flowers and shrubs. Three exhibition halls have been transformed into hothouses where the flowers are periodically changed. Roses and other summer flowers followed spring flowers, such as irises. These flowers, too, will change with the season in this unique show which will last for 177 days. Other gardens in the Loire Valley have lasted and will last far longer than 177 days. Four hundred years ago, Philibert Delorme designed this garden for Catherine de' Medici. For this is the Chateau of Chenonceau, and its gardens are among the wonders of France. Vola Vicomte's gardens were designed by the most famous of the 16th century classical garden architects, Le Notre. It was here that Louis XV mounted some of his most elaborate extravaganzas. Le Notre's landscaping leaves nothing to nature. The boxwood hedges were designed to enhance the perspective. Symmetrical in their perfection, the gardens are unchanged since the days of the Sun King. The Chateau of Villandry also represents the formal garden at its most perfect. Everything, trees, flowers, and hedges are tamed by the hand of man. The hedges are cut into the varying symbols of love, hearts, masks, butterflies, fans, like many royal gardens, there is a labyrinth. Even the vegetable garden is a delight to the eye. Nine different squares are edged with boxwood to emphasize their composition. A far cry from the average householder's kitchen plot, the gardens of Villandry represent the flawless order of the classic French garden. France's oldest soccer cup, the Coupe de France, celebrated its 50th anniversary in a match between Lyon and Sochaux.
The game got off to a slow start, but was enlivened by an unexpected assist from its most distinguished spectator. Leal won the game, three to one. Ignoring protocol, President de Gaulle congratulated both captains on contributing to the success of the 50th anniversary of the French Cup. At a school near Paris, skin divers are taught not to fish, but to work underwater. Men are chosen for physical stamina and courage, for much of the work is arduous and dangerous. First, they must be trained frogmen. Then, they are taught specialized skills in working conditions which are far from normal. The men always work in pairs. They must learn to work with poor visibility, strong currents, and in cold water. Sanders are used to clean ship surfaces before they are welded or painted. By using sanding and scraping tools, the need to dry dock ships is no longer necessary for small jobs. The jackhammer requires less manual skill, but underwater it does require great strength. It is frequently used in demolition work on abandoned bridge piers or for cleaning away underwater debris. Painting also is possible. A resin-based paint hardens in water. Arc welding is extremely difficult because of poor visibility, but it can be done. These worker skin divers have been employed on projects throughout the underwater world, in Europe, the Americas, and Asia. Forty years ago, a young American took off in a small plane from a field on Long Island to make aviation history 33 hours later when he landed at Le Bourget Airport in Paris. The French crowds went delirious over the tall young pilot. Indeed, the whole world was electrified when news of the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic was flashed around the globe. Charles Lindbergh's tour of Europe was a triumph, and he and his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, were hailed everywhere. Then, 40 years later, a replica of the Lindbergh plane is in the forefront of the American exhibit at the 27th Air Show in Paris. This 27th Aeronautical and Space Salon was opened by the French president, who visited several exhibits, among them the full-scale model of the French-British supersonic transport, the Concorde. It was among the 200 different planes and helicopters, as well as scores of space satellites and rockets of the 17 nations taking part in this biennial exhibition. In the French pavilion, there were several satellites, some of which had already been launched from the Sahara. Others will be launched from the new space center in Guiana. The United States highlighted an Apollo spacecraft whose scorched exterior attests to the fact that it had already made a round trip into space. The President not only saw the Apollo spaceship, but also met two of the American Gemini astronauts, Michael Collins and David Scott. An experimental American lifting body is designed to bounce back from the atmosphere. The Russians also showed for the first time a full range of their rockets used in telecommunications, including the giant 12-ton Proton, largest satellite ever launched. The multiple booster rocket, the Vostok, 
Among the Russian helicopters were the MI6 and KA-25. While the Americans had on hand two heavy cargo helicopters, the CH-46 and 47. French helicopters displayed new techniques in rigid rotors. Among the large planes were the American C-141 and the Soviet turboprop Antonov-22. Some small planes were experimental, such as this French one. Or for purely private use, like this British pup. There were scores of military planes, the French Mirage 4. The Franco-British tactical support, Jaguar. The Swedish trainer, Saab 105. And the star of the military show, the American F-111, first plane of variable geometry to fly. But nearby was a rival, Dassault's Mirage 3G, also with movable wings, which allows the plane to fly at both subsonic and supersonic speeds. The Mirage 3G will be test flown this year. The problem of vertical or short landing and takeoff planes is of interest to all countries. And there were several examples of these planes at the show. This is the Franco-German Transall, a turboprop cargo plane capable of extremely short takeoffs. So the show covers the full range from planes for short runways to rockets to the moon. In 1907, when motion pictures were still in their infancy, a Frenchman named Emile Cole did some experiments with animation. He had the inspiration to photograph people, then drawing his animation around their action. His first cartoon ran 120 feet, required 3,000 drawings, and more than 10 months of work. Emile Cole, a pioneer in film animation.